must have called for reinforcements. Don't let them escape! It's no use. Lava Look sharp! Stand together! Better! Send <laughs> Madiko, I thought I was done for. These monstrous brutes. Look at what they have done. They've destroyed all we have worked toward for a little coin. Who else? At least they have the guile not to send their own people. This is a bold move, even for the Royal Dead Fire Company. They are losing patience. And look at our machines. We'll clean up here. See to the wounded. You'd best get over to the offices. Let them know what happened. Hmm? Indeed. Certainly. We are all still shaken, but it could have been a far greater loss without your help. What can I do for you? Sure thing, Amiga. Comes with the job, doesn't it? Well, a few years in a deal will do that to you. Up to your armpits in jungle mud, insects, and snotty novels. Which is why we stay indoors and take up civilized habits, like proper enunciation. Oh, things are much different here. The Juana may not have the same passion for the field as the Republic's, but they understand we're doing research, not sacrificing children to wolves or whatever it is the Deerwood believes. So, no riots. Fortunately, news out of the Deerwood doesn't mean much to this lot. It took us a few months to adapt. A few bad shocks, too, before we finish proofing the machinery against rain. I like to think it lends it all a little drama, no? Besides, how better to honor Helia than with invention? For now, ne? No trouble if you think of anything else, Aminka.
Dead fire's so different than what I'm used to. Well, it must be for you, too. Ugh. Quite different. Even I am not accustomed to this much sailing. They, uh, they seem to hold the godlike in high regard. You ever think about staying? The Dukes have liberated me from the burden of making that choice, Adair. Welcome back, welcome back. It is a pleasure to see you once again. Tell me, how is the sailing? Smooth? Nothing to delay your expedition, I hope. How might I assist you? We're so close. There's only one corner of the map left. Only it's for good reason. The waters in those parts are... Well, this region is probably why I had so much trouble finding help before you came along. Time to set out for the Razai Passage, out to the northwest. There are several islands out there nobody's done more than Ogolat from afar. I'll be waiting. Kalajina, how is it nothing about what the gods are up to seems to faze you? When you think the worst of them, the worst they can do comes as little surprise. Don't you at least want to hear what Aethys has to say? Only a fool would trust what he had to say. Whatever he said would be just another lie. I'm not saying it wouldn't, just looking for... I don't know. Someone who can answer my questions. They're saying there was an attack at the Spire. I fear I'd sent you to your death. None of the Huana guards will tell us a thing, and Flaune's message is illegible. What happened? Mercenaries? Madiko. I did not think these experiments would draw so much interest. I'm glad you're in one piece, Watcher. I'll have the details out to Flaune, I think. You've more than earned your reward. And my trust. Oh, and uh, perhaps you'd consider stopping by Alvari's office. I believe she'll want some assurances as to the state of the Spire. decide if the gods must love or hate you, Watcher. Perhaps both. Volcanoes, giant waves, Mel have had my fill of this island. It involves no divinities, but I do have some news for you as well. I have decided to take action with regards to Castor's incompetence. I have called together a meeting of the Songreta Mia Compressa. Our esteemed investors have come to hear Director Castol's excuses for squandering their fortunes. 
You've witnessed Castle's mistakes personally, and you know what is at stake for us with Ukaizo. The council we want to hear from you, the Canton of Chase in particular. The company needs new leadership. Leadership that can make effective use of its most important allies. Let us start here. Striking a fine impression before the wealthiest men and women in Eora. Of course. If I did not believe it with all my soul, I would not dare to trouble the council. Men have died for less. You will attend the trial, I hope. Your testimony is a vital part of the proceedings. Indeed. Come then. I'll send for our esteemed guests. Meet us upstairs when you are ready. Silence, please. I'd like to get us underway. I see you have wasted little time in involving yourself, lady. Director Gastol, Governor Alvari, you are both here? Indeed, Your Excellency. Yes, Your Excellency. And this is to be your witness? A moment, Nero. Is that not Pelagina Mesrae? Are you collecting godly castoffs, Casto? Most esteemed guests, this is the Watcher of Cad Nua. We were sorry to hear of Cad Nua's fall, lady. How interesting to find you here. You have my sympathies. I have several connections in the White March. I have always wanted to meet the woman behind the stories. Let us begin. If the clerks will attend the roll, Albina Carnetto, Duke Remassi Storanzo Miscellona, the Archmage. Devils take your role, Nero. This isn't the Songreta Ducala. We are all here. Let's get this over with. Outsider law has more teeth than Ngati's pets, I say. They may not be violent, but these fine people are all ruthless in their own way. The roads they took to reach this room are littered with their enemies. If this goes badly, at least there's enough wealth in this room to cover our funeral expenses several times over. Very well. Then let me extend my sincerest thanks to our shareholders in attendance. Ah, the Songreta Mea Compressa. They have made the largest investments in the company's holdings. In deference to present company, we will proceed in Edira. Director Castor. You stand accused of nothing less than gross incompetence, mismanaging of resources, willful deceit, grave charges all. We have examined the evidence available to us. The numbers are not in your favor, Director, but you will have the opportunity to explain yourself. Now, Alvari. Agrasima, Your Excellency. Estimed Council, I bear Maestro Castle no ill will. We have always treated one another with great respect, but his time is past. I put it plain, the company is bleeding resources. We have identified numerous sources of ADRA, and yet how much of it ever reaches the Republics? The expedition to Pococohara was but the latest failure. Trained workers and supplies gone, and for nothing. You mean to say that the vein was secured in the end? Well, that is 
Yes, Your Excellency, but... A strange argument. We are concerned with results, Arvari. As far as I can see, the expedition was a success. I have more, Your Excellency. Your coin, lords and ladies. Where has it gone all this while? Not to mines and industry, no. The director has spent the bulk of it on frivolous experiments. Th 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 that is absurd. Anamancy research has gotten us where we are today. Precisely. Enough, Alvari. Watcher, you have had some involvement in these experiments. Do you have anything to add? Coin has done well enough for us already. It truly works. You mean to say that the Animancers have learned how to uh, transport people? Certainly not. We have heard much of Akaizo in recent days. I wonder, Director Castor, just what are your plans for the fabled city? Akaizo holds an enormous quantity of uh, luminous Adra. Our research has already yielded uh, results. If we can establish an outpost there, then... If we take this opportunity, we can uh, accomplish far more than we initially believed. I could make you rich, lords and ladies, beyond your wildest dreams. Ah, oh, you may be rich in a century or two. Have you that long to wait? Some of you, perhaps, but all? Dreams are all Castle has to offer. We have scores of Adra sites mapped to detail. Why not focus our efforts there? Castle risks your fortune on illusions. That, uh, that is true. We have mapped these deposits for years. The closer we travel to Andra's mortar, the, the denser the deposits. Even Alvari knows this. Why, yes, to support the Anamancers and Watchers we will send there. Even if there is Adra past the mortar, let us grind down the whole of it and be done with the place. Or will the Songreta war against the natives and sea monsters for the next hundred years? I believe the case before us is quite clear. Alvari, have you anything further to add? My lords, ladies, our enemies will make for Ukaizo in short order. The Valiant Trading Company must be ready. It needs decisive, effective leadership now more than ever. With the Watcher's aid, we have the opportunity to claim an overwhelming victory. One that will carry us all into the history books. Assuming she means to help us... We will see, won't we? You have heard all the accusations against you. Castal, any final words? Everything I do, I do to help the company. You know this. Two years ago, you entrusted me to establish the Luminous Adra trade. I will continue to serve you, dutifully, and to my best ability. I know now that Alvari has hungered after my position for years. Just as she will hunt after yours if you allow her to rise. She would cast Margarin off her throne if she could. Maestras and Mestres. I cannot deny that Director Castol has jeopardized the company's interests in the Dead File. But his ambitions align with those of the Republic's. Such ambitions carry risk, but they also bring the potential for your company, for our Republics to become the uncontested leaders of the world to come. I am speaking of more than gold, more than prestige. 
Success will bring the power to shape the future as you imagine it could be. No, as the people in this room cannot yet imagine it could be. You inspire much loyalty, Castor. If only it were so amongst your own peers. It is time. Let us put the matter of Castor's dismissal to a vote. All in favor. You have overreached, Alvar. And the Sangreta does not take kindly to being called away from our business to indulge your schemes. Sate your ambitions in the living lands. Lueva Alvari, I hereby strip you of your rank and title and pronounce you exiled from the Valian Trading Company and the Valian Republics by order of the Sangreta Mia Compressa. This is a serious mistake. You can't do this to me. I believe that brings this meeting to a close. I... I must see the shareholders out. But uh, please, let us speak afterwards. The living lands. Poor Alvari. I cannot stop thinking on it. How easily it might have been my fate. All my achievements gone in an instant. Ah, <sighs> well. She brought it on herself, didn't she? The members of the Songreta, they are not to be taken lightly. Ugh, I know it. Inside, I know it. Well, I am still director, and our ambitions have not changed. We move forward. The Council wishes for results, so we will give them results. The Royal Deadfire Company will not sit idly by while we claim Ukaizo. If we set out now, they will do everything in their power to stop us. So, we know the threat that the Royal Deadfire Company poses. We must strike first. The Royal Deadfire Company has a primary powder house in the Brass Citadel. The bulk of their powder is stored there, and from there delivered to the greater portion of the ships of the Royal Fleet. Destroying that powder house would make for a crippling blow against the fleet, enough to make an occupation of the Deadfire seem little better than a fever dream. Of course, the building is very well defended. You cannot simply walk inside. It might be impossible if the Royal Deadfire Company had not decided to use the Adra Formation inside the Powder House as a source of illumination. With Alette's machines and your talents, walls are little obstacle. Hard choices, Watcher, are what being director is all about. You know the things we've done to get here. I can see no other path forward. If all goes to plan, there will be nothing to tie either of us to this. I will vouch for your innocence, Watcher. I swear it. In truth, the trickier part will be to get you out before you are caught in the blast. The powder house is a tinderbox waiting to blow. But Elette has a solution, a device that will give you time in which to make your escape. She will explain more. She waits for you at the spire. Remember, be cautious. If anyone learns of our role in this, we may wish that the Songreta exiled the both of us. I'm here. Absolutely.
At once. See? Boss was right. We found it. By the cursed seas, I'll throw you down there myself if you do not hush right now. Need something? Lots of folks come through the hole, fresh face. Have a look around for yourself, yeah? This does not look good. Why would someone do this to Jokolo's work? I thought Anamansas was safe here in the dead fire. Even in a place this vile, someone must have heard or seen something. We should ask the owner if they know what happened. I hope so. Agrasima. Need something? Can't say I know a jackalo, fresh face, but if you're meaning that guy with all the fancy and a schmancy equipment, a bunch of pirates burst in here and dragged him right out. Now, the hole's no high society tea house, but that's still some of the weirdest shit I ever seen go down here. See, the pirates? Every one of them was godlike. No doubt they hauled him through the narrows, heard him hollering the whole way. Poor guy.
What is it? What did you see? Madiko. Jakulo abducted by godlike pirates. But why? He has always done his best to help my kind. Watcher, I have asked much of you already. But if you can find time to go to Dunwich to find this Captain Tutsadl, it would mean a great deal to me. It did not sound as though he was in imminent danger. But I fear what they will do to him. Not in the Republics. I can't think of why Godlike, of all kith, would have any reason to take him. Something strange is going on here. Perhaps it has something to do with his research. I am sure we will find out when we find Captain Tadzatl. You find yourself in cold, suffocating darkness. There is a familiar weight in your hand. A lantern. It sputters to life, and the world shifts into focus. A staircase spirals endlessly below you. With nowhere else to go, you start down. On every landing stands a door, each one stranger than the last. Some are clear made from glass or audra. Others still are locked with chains and bars, or stand ajar, spilling inky gloom across the steps at your feet. You hear the ringing of a small bell far above you. It is joined by another, then another. The ringing rushes down the staircase with all the strength of a river. Your lantern sputters out and you are carried down into the dark. The torrent deposits you in front of an open door carved in the constellations of Aora. Each star indicated by a small golden stud. A wave of blistering heat hits you. Then a sea salt wind. Divine voices boom and screech. Their words shake the platform beneath you, shake the very air around you. The gods are fighting. Lay your blame elsewhere, Warica. I won't suffer your arguments any longer. Magrin looms large before you, an accusing finger leveled at the melted visage of Wodica. Wodica screws her mouth into a sneer. You fool! If only we had attacked him when I first proposed it. Accusations drip bitter as bile from her tongue. Wal smiles. Enmity and animus, watcher. Two old songs we sing in well-practiced harmony. Unable to reach accords, we compete to see who shouts best shake aura. The pallid knight looks down at you, a frown etched deep in her otherwise statue-still features. 
I am afraid we are not at our best. The Watchers return. Perhaps we should hear what she has to say. Helia's birds chatter anxiously among themselves. Wal's many eyes alight on each god in turn. We make little enough progress on our own. They say, a wry smile contorting their alien features. We try, but agreement eludes us. Andra's storm-dark eyes swivel to meet yours. Is there nothing we can do? Magrin glances at the pallid knight from the corner of her eye. After a thoughtful pause, she speaks. The time has come for us to seize the power we have long left untouched and absorb our scattered children. Andra nods, her lure bobbing bright. Terrible though it would be, perhaps you are right. I did, and I was scolded like a child for my terrible audacity. A curl of steam rises from her nose. The pallid knight looks on, impassive. Should we be killed in our god forms, we can possess you, our godlike children. Or should we face a force too powerful to stand against, we can absorb your souls, granting us additional strength. You, Helia's wayward daughter, Andra's precious son, and thousands of others. Yes, we would all die. The Pallid Knight speaks with the chilly temperance possessed only by the God of Death. But the time for that plan has long passed us by. Are we to keep nothing for ourselves? Not a single secret retained? Not a solitary mystery? Magrin elbows one of Wal's floating eyes away. Aethys will lay bare our every secret soon enough. What is one or two revealed now? But we get ahead of ourselves. First, the Watcher must get to Ukaizo, and that will be a trial all its own. The Guardian of Ukaizo has stood watch over that place for millennia. It will not stand aside, not even for Barith's Herald. Helia, who had been lost in quiet, anxious conversation with her birds, breaks in. It yet lives. Of course. Our progenitors crafted it. A pair of Helia's finches come to join Wow's floating eye. They hover just out of Magrin's reach and swoop in to poke her when she's not looking. And the Watcher will be forced to reckon with it if she wishes to confront Aethys. The birds at last linger too long, and Magrin slaps them away. They burst into a cloud of essence, then reform and fly in a screeching chorus back to Helia. A creature crafted by the Inguithans to protect the machinery of reincarnation. It doesn't care much for visitors. Will you divulge our every secret to the kith, Magrin? Magrin shrugs. If it suits me. Go prepared, Watcher. The Guardian will not stand aside. Not even for the Herald of Barath. Where's the challenge in that? Magrin's black teeth shine. There is another topic we have yet to address. The Pallid Knight holds up one gauntleted hand, and the other gods fall silent. Tell me, Watcher, where do you stand? What do you think of Aeothus' scheme to destroy the wheel? The Pallid Knight spreads wide her hands. Think of the beyond as a reservoir, the in-between as storm clouds, and souls as rain. When a living thing dies, its soul enters the in-between. And when the in-between grows full, it releases souls into the beyond, where they wait to be redistributed to new bodies, new lives. The wheel is the process by which souls are moved from the in-between to the beyond. 
from the rain cloud to the reservoir, and from the reservoir into the living world. Without the wheel to mediate the transfer and redistribution of souls, the souls of all who die remain in the in-between. And without souls to fill it, the beyond gradually empties, trapping all of the remaining souls in existence in the in-between. When the beyond is empty and the last creature on Aora dies, that is the end of everything. It is Rumagon's future, the one he wants for us. Soul essence sustains us. We feed off it, off the little fragments you mortal kids shed like snakeskin as you pass into your next life. Without sustenance, we starve as any mortal might. We die and leave a great silence behind, an eternal emptiness from which nothing is born. How can we not? We are each of us beholden to our natures. It is how we made ourselves, just as you are bound by the choices you've made. Tell us, Watcher, where do you stand? Perhaps you misunderstand. This is not a test you will overcome on your own. Aethys intends to change the fundamental structure of life and death. Does that not frighten you? You, Kith, who are most vulnerable? Aethys loves the mortals more than any of us. He has always been their greatest champion. He believes Kith will rise to his challenge. I am not so sure, but I look forward to watching them try. He found our blind spot and exploited it admirably. By the time we even had a hint of what it was he intended, it was already too late to stop him. If we still had our bodies, we could oppose him. Mordica balls her bony hands into fists and glares long at Andra. Do not lay your blame on me. We set them aside after I killed Abaddon, it is true, but you did not fight the decision then. She turns her back on Mordica then and looks instead to the Pallid Knight. What if Aethys is right and kids succeed in rebuilding the wheel? What then? Wal grins. Always, Watcher. And what if they fail? Then they die. And so do we. We have to help them. Helia's voice rises, near to panic. Warica drives her fist into her hand. Help them! We should finally bring them to heal! The Pallid Knight raises a hand and stares at Warica until she falls silent. Watcher, Aeothis yet values your counsel. The Pallid Knight's eyes bore into yours. An impassioned plea from the Hound of Aeothis may still temper his actions. Confront him at Ukaizo. The future of Kith and the gods rests on your shoulders, Watcher, so I hope that you do. The Pallid Knight's stern countenance softens. Time moves swiftly away from us now. The Pallid Knight spreads her hands before her. Go, Watcher. Do what you must. The edges of your vision begin to dim. Like a sun setting, twilight encroaches on your mind. You will not fail. 
the pallid knight conjures a blinding white light in her palm that swiftly grows to engulf the room. Then, the crack of thunder rends the air and you feel the floor drop out beneath you. You come to flat on your back, staring at an all too familiar ceiling, alone once again. Don't let anyone tell you you're too shrimpy to be a fighter. I was half your age when I started training. Yeah? Tell me what's on your mind? Not a one. I never knew nothing. No need to fiddle foot around. You need me, I'll be two whoops and a holler away. Watcher, you only have to ask. Hmm. I have to give Aeoth this credit. He is the only one of his kind to see how corrupt and self-serving the gods are. Even better, his plan, mad as it is, must be sending the rest of his kind into a fit. Their days are numbered, and there is nothing they can do to stop what is coming. Not at all. Anamancers will fix what the gods have perverted, and the Republics will lead the way. With any luck, in a few generations, the names of the gods will be forgotten entirely. Wonder what Pa's up to. Kedete Elahiza. Ask, please. Ungo. You look like you have something on your mind. What's on your mind? With everything going on at once, I wondered if... Gods, if we could talk. Can we take a detour to the officer's lounge in the Brass Citadel? I could use a drink. I appreciate it, Captain. Hope you don't mind if I gather my thoughts on the way. So, it's to be Ukaizo. The last great arena of this contest, if you believe that sort of thing. Planting a flag in the sands of Ukaizo is a great way to hang a target on your back. I just want to know that we're doing this for the right reason. So far, I'm unconvinced. Until I see Ukaizo for myself, it's a bedtime story. Let the poets hang their hopes on a dream. Rawatai's navy should be better than this. Ukaizo has fooled everyone into sacrificing and compromising for the ultimate prize of... what? Getting there first? Even if we succeed, not everyone's gonna make it back to sing the tale of lost Ukaizo. Ukaizo isn't a fortress in the path of shipping lanes. We don't even know if this mythical island has any defensive value. When this campaign is spread across razor-thin margins, how does the company plan on sustaining a garrison half the world away in uncharted seas? All the powers imagine that Ukaizo is a symbol for control, and they're willing to bet everything that they're right. Couldn't be prouder to be a part of it, Captain. Thanks for letting me squawk in your ear like a she's after too much shark meat. I needed that. Go on, then.
Ahoy, Captain. What can I do you for? Ooh, ask away, Cap. Endless, Cap. We ain't a flog-stroking Rowetai Navy, twixt the seaworthy vessel and passable crew. You've managed yourself the hardest part already. Now you just need to be setting yourself to piracy, after you be talking it over with the Consuelo. No, we ain't exactly a bunch known for housing hard-ons for hard rules. Ooh, ask away, Cap. Aye, aye, Cap. Ikera, for what do I owe the pleasure? I thought Juana didn't believe in personal property. Yet you've brought quite the assortment of leather necklaces. Akira, just so. But not all of them go around my neck. In that case, perhaps you could remove them from my sleeping berth. Oh, it is no burden, my friend. You are free to borrow one. Keep moving. This here is for the crew of the Divine Barge. You ain't a part of it, so you ain't getting inside. Hey, you're one of Andra's blessed, just like Captain Totsaddle. He'd probably like you. Have you tried the Wild Mare in Nekataka? I'm sure they have a boy or two who would let you call him Giacolo for a couple hours. Per Blanca, let us pass. I know you have Giacolo. I have known him since I was a girl in the Republics. So? Why should I care? He saved my life. He has saved the lives of many of our kind. Whatever you think he has done, you have the wrong idea about him. Eh. Fine. I probably won't live to regret this. After you. We are honored by your presence, Captain. What brings you to this place? You have abducted the Anamansa Giacolo, a valued citizen of the Valian Republics. He enjoys the protection of the Duke's Bells and Panits, and through them, the Fremas Mesconsuelias. As a representative of the Brotherhood, I am here to negotiate his safe release. If Giocolo is not returned to us in good health, everyone involved in his kidnapping will face the wrath of the Five Sons. This, I swear. I see. We ourselves have been debating what to do with Giocolo for quite some time. We are lost in the woods. You will guide us out by traveling the branching paths of Altleja. A forest is defined by its boundaries. There are a finite number of ways through a forest, just as there are a finite number of ways this can end. I know the ways out of the forest, but you will choose the paths to take. A woman is with a child, and she learns that if the child is born, it will suffer greatly and have a short life. If she ends the child's life before it truly begins, is this good or bad? I think that it... <laughs>
You discover a powerful new technology, but you are afraid some people may misuse it for ill purposes. Would you destroy the technology, regulate access to it, or make it available to everyone equally? Certainly it should not be destroyed. It would only be a matter of time before someone else made the same discovery. Well, there's always the potential for ill, but we cannot govern people by removing their choices. We must trust that reason and moderation will win out. An en would you allow the persecution to continue, or would you intervene to stop it? You learn that someone who does great good for many people is unintentionally going to do great harm to many people. The harm may not be great, or it may be so great that it dwarfs the good they have done. You have an opportunity to prevent this by killing them. Do you do so? Very well. Your path has led to this conclusion. We will release Giacolo and his research. Que? What was the point of taking him to begin with? Giacolo has discovered a method by which one may detect a godlike fetus in a mother's womb. In the Deadfire Archipelago, parents consider a godlike child to be a blessing. From Bereth and Helia to Andra and Galloway, all are beloved, save those of Scan. Appearing mutilated at birth, many godlike of Scan are killed with the tacit approval of the tribe. Those who aren't killed lead miserable lives. I agree, as does my crew, which is why we decided to bring Giacolo here to decide what should be done about him and his research. And after all this, you're going to let him go because of how the Watcher answered your stupid riddles? Yes. Our group was conflicted, so I posed to you a series of hypothetical questions, absent the specific context of our current problem. While you may have deduced some hint of the context during the questioning, it was a less biased method of reasoning than we were engaged in. After all, for us, this is a matter of life and death. There may be superior ways to debate this subject, but it is the best approach I could conceive. Mestre Giacolo and his research are free to go. Now, if you will excuse us, we must prepare for our next voyage. I honestly do not know what those pirates would have done to Giacolo if we hadn't arrived. And now we have saved not only the man, but his research as well. Agrisima, Watcher. p p -palagina. Is that you, my girl? I thought those p pirates would have been the end of me. Not if I could do something about it. I owe you too much to let something happen to you over some nonsense. My girl, what that satyr said is not non nonsense. He had good reason to be afraid.
Sadly, many are not. And as a group, we have no ability to monitor and reprimand those who act irresponsibly. And you should not be expected to. Who would even be capable of doing such a thing? How would that work? Would Anamancers submit to the authority of other Anamancers? Perhaps, perhaps. Old age has a few benefits, my girl. One is a measure of respect from your younger colleagues. If we attempted to guide them with a gentle hand, Ack, perhaps. Well, it appears we are done here. We should see you back to Nekataka, Mestre Jokolo. Ack, Ack. Before I go, I want you to have this, Saimoranet. An amulet of my own invention. It resonates with the go godlike souls. Even severed, there is enough magic in your chime to activate its power. Appreciate all you have done, both of you. Is it settled now? I do not like having my hand forced by some rogue god. Indeed, the vote has been cast. There can be no dispute. The traitor Aldis will hang. Your vote of confidence is appreciated, my Consuelo. Rest assured, you have made the right decision. The Black Pox sees we have! What a fucking farce! Mark my words, Councilman. Your souls will be damned for this scheme! Do not forget your promise, Furante. With Eldis out of the way, you will sail us to Ukaizo, well before the Huana, the Valen Trading Company, or any others can plunder it. The god will lead us there, and the floating hangman will navigate the storms. Watcher, your timing is impeccable as always. We have just concluded a vote of phenomenal importance. Blast this! You can outvote me, but you can't make me stay and watch. One of our Consuelo members, Captain Aldis, has been charged and found guilty of those crimes, punishable by death. Defiance. On several past occasions, Aldis has willfully dismissed the mandates of the Consuelo. Oh, there is more. Negligence. Too often, Aldis has outright neglected her responsibilities to the Consuelo. When a meeting is called, the presence of all members is required. Excessive cruelty. Aldis and her new bloods often commit extreme violence in pursuit of financial gain. This drives our foes to take harsher measures against us. Sedition which you witnessed firsthand when Aldis negotiated with our enemies without the consent of the Consuelo. She has single-handedly endeavored to spark a civil war within the Principi on multiple occasions. And, worst of all, betrayal. 
Aldis sacrificed an entire crew of Principi in an ill-fated attempt to lure out the floating hangman so that she might captain it. This Consuelo session is now concluded. Watcher, might I have a word with you in confidence? What happened at Margran's teeth changes everything. We must acquire the floating hangman if we've any hope to reach Ukaizo before Aeothus destroys everything. Which brings somehow, Aldis has uncovered a means to summon the floating hangman, but she is hunkered within her stronghold of Fort Deadlight. Myself and the others of the Consuelo must lay siege to get to her. However, you have a means of entry to the fortress. I need what she knows before I can hang her. Obtain it for me, and I will grant you her seat on the Consuelo. Sail to Fort Deadlight and seize the answers which Aldis has secreted for her own gain. Are you ready to meet our commander? Aldis has been waiting for you. Right this way, Captain. It's my pleasure to show our honored guest around. Aye, it sure is. ceases to be a wonder. I only wish we met under more pleasurable circumstances. You wanted to speak with me? Well, consider me a captive audience. I, but necessary. Do you disapprove of my tactics? Then I shall henceforth endeavour to be more discreet, simply in order to please you, my fine and fearsome partner. Now, to discuss our next steps. The storms would be problematic for sure, if I didn't already have a plan to take command of the floating hangman so as to utterly quell them. We'll sail on through easy as you please, but first, I have a bit of research to hunt down. Last bit of the puzzle, if you will. I'll let you know when it's all set, Lovesom. I haven't the faintest idea as to what you could mean, Lovesom. You're not buying it, eh? Hmm. Guess it was only a matter of time. I knew the spies I strung up by their guts couldn't have been the only ones. They were just the poor squabs who got caught. Only a fool would trust a deal with Ferrante! How do you think he got to be the head of the Council of Captains? By making his sailors love him? By playing fair? No. It was by beating his enemies in the most gut-churning of ways. 
that's how you keep new ones from wanting to try you. Ferrante covets the floating hangman in order to enforce his control of the Principi, not to protect us from our outside enemies, nor to beat your rampaging god to Ukaizo. But I'm two leagues ahead of Ferrante. I know how to summon and command the floating hangman. Of course, I destroyed the information as soon as I uncovered Ferrante's spies. You'll never learn it without me. You're right. I do want to trust you. But if we're to help each other, there is one thing I want from you in return for the floating hangman. That cockrot Ferrante needs to go. Hang him, gut him, I don't care. But get rid of him, all right? I don't see how. Unless Ferrante could be shown to be a traitor to the Principi. I'll sail to Dunnage and take command of the Principi as soon as Ferrante is gone. Thank you. 